Welcome to Firearms of America. Today, as you guys can see, I have another Columbia boot for review. And these are the all new Columbia Out Dry Hiking Boots. And they are pretty awesome. I do like them a lot. Very comfortable, very lightweight for all the features that they do offer. Currently $130 on Amazon. The link is in the description below. They run true to the size, waterproof, excellent outsole. So you got your preview overview. But if you have time to watch the whole review, let's get into it. As some of you already know, this review is specifically for my ultimate survival boots section. So if you were wearing this boots on a hike or you had it in a house and something bad happened, right? You had to leave your house or maybe you were out on the hike and you couldn't return home. So you had to walk somewhere, maybe even run to get to the safe destination for miles and miles. And on the way you had to climb, fight, do whatever that is necessary to survive. Would this be good boots to survive in? Would they contribute to, this, to your survival? So. How do we make the judgment? We make the judgment based on eight different criteria. Let's begin. Criteria number one, of course, comfort level. One of the more important ones. And in order to test the comfort level, I do a three mile run and then a five mile walk without stopping, no pauses in between. Yes, I know sometimes running in the boots that are really not designed for running, like trail running shoes, for example, is a little bit weird, but these type of testing allows me to make a very unbiased and very equal judging on everything, all of the shoes, all of the boots I review on this channel. So like I said, these are very comfortable. There are a few factors that contribute to the comfort level. Of course, first one being the weight. So let's see how heavy these are. This is size 10 and as you can see, 16. 0.7. Now, I have to say, this is very impressive for a boot in the first place. Plus, considering that these are winter boots with 200 grams of insulation, considering that these are waterproof, that is really, really a good weight. Now, I always say on this channel, whenever I do my reviews, that if you want something that is lightweight, enough to where you don't get fatigue from the weight on your feet. If you're doing some extensive walking, some running, you want something under 20 ounce. And these are 16, well under 20 ounce. Very, very good. Now, there are a few other factors that contribute to the comfort level. Of course, we have our inner soul. And the inner soul here is very basic, really nothing crazy about it. It is nicely shaped. As you can see, it is lined with this very comfy to the touch fleece material. So it's the inside of the tongue and then a little bit on the shaft. Uh, but overall, this is very good. It's nicely shaped, so it has the heel bed. So whenever you're running, your heel kind of stays in place, which does help. And besides this inner sole, there's also another layer of jelly cushioning here underneath so that all of that combined together gives you very, very good protection from the impact. Very helpful whenever you're running. And uh, speaking of running, another thing that contributes to the comfort level is the flexibility of the bottom sole. And here it is definitely very, very flexible. Now, if you are not running properly and you're putting some stress on your heels, uh, on your ankles, on your knees, all of that soft protection from the impact definitely helps. Of course, we do have our insulation lining, which is what this Omni technology that Columbia uses in their insulated boots, this uh, metal looking pattern. It is very, very nice and soft to the touch. Definitely adds to the comfort. So just the insulation itself adds to the comfort. And of course, because it goes all the way on the inside here, inside of the toe box, it is very, very soft. So. One of the things that I really like about the insulated boots is that they do add to the comfort level because of that very nice and soft uh, lining that is implemented. The insulation 
on the inside. So overall, whenever it comes to the comfort, this is definitely a great, great boot. I mean, Columbia so far really never let me down in the comfort level. One of my main boots that I use for my more or less serious hiking are the Columbia boots, in fact. So great job, Columbia, whenever it comes to the comfort. Now let's move on to the criteria number two, which is proofing and protection. Now I already mentioned that these boots are waterproof, obviously because Columbia calls them snow boot and they're supposed to be winter boot considering the insulation. So definitely you want something that is waterproof. And uh, you probably already noticed the gusting here on the tongue. Now this gusting on the tongue here, let me grab my ruler and uh, tell you approximately, yeah, you have about five inches of that waterproofing, which is pretty good. Honestly, Columbia could have implemented a little bit more, maybe another half of the inch with the gusting going a little bit higher because there is more of the shaft. N not really a big deal. Just thought I would, you know, throw it out there for absolutely no reason. But <laughs> keep in mind, pretty good. Five inches, definitely pretty good. Whenever it comes to the waterproofing, <laughs> definitely good. Now let's move on to the protection here. There isn't really much to mention on the protection. You have, uh, um, you know, you have this piece of, uh, fabric going over, you know, the front of your toe box. Not much really there to give you anything sufficient when it comes to the protection. Overall, the the, the toe is soft. Uh, you don't really have anything in the ankles. Of course, you know, you do have some fabric to give you something, but really nothing much to protect you from the impact. Uh, the heel again is also very, very soft as you can see. So not much there either. Uh, the only sufficient protection here is from the bottom because this thin layer of rubber, it might be very thin, but it gives you a decent protection. But we'll talk about it later, later in the outsole. So uh, let's move on to the criteria number three, quality and the design features. Now quality wise, Columbia, you probably guys know, they have been around forever making hiking gear forever, not just boots, but clothing items as well. And they are just, I mean, excellent. So far, I have not had a bad Columbia boot or shoe on this channel. So I definitely do like them a lot. And I mean, if you you know want to judge by the reviews, you can check out the link in the description below for Amazon. Because these are newer, there's only about 40 reviews on Amazon, almost five stars. But, but check out other models, very similar to this one would be, for example, Fairbanks, Columbia Fairbanks, excellent, excellent boot. Also has the Omni Heat insulation. And uh, yeah, they have way, way more reviews. So you can kind of see that Columbia, they definitely know what they're doing. Uh, but design features, let's talk about the design features. Um, here I usually talk about the lacing system. Really nothing crazy over here. Very basic, very simple. Good uh, strings that I do like, a little bit on the fatter side, which I prefer. Um, there are a combination of, you know, your regular holes that are implemented here into this uh, fabric. And of course, there are some fabric hooks as well, close hooks. And of course, you do have one pair of open hooks too. So nothing really special over here. Overall, does the job. Now let's move on to the criteria number four, outsole traction and stability. Now, uh, this outsole, as you can see, it's on the flatter side which is good, um, especially considering that they are designed to be used in the snow. This is definitely very, very good in the snow. And I had my personal experience testing them in the snow in North Carolina. Uh, it wasn't really that cold, so I can't really comment much on the temperature, which we will talk about that later. But on the snow, they do handle very, very good because of the flat, um, because of the overall flat pattern on the outsole. You don't really dig in that much into the snow. Uh, you don't really kind of get stuck in it. It, it kind of holds you nicely um, on top of it without digging in too much. But uh, I also do the testing on the variety of other different surfaces because whenever I do my run and the walk, I have uh, here by my house, you know, it's, it's an older asphalt, newer tarmac, sand, dry sand, wet sand, dry grass, wet grass, rocky road, trail surface, of course, and some marble and tile even. And uh, overall, this is very good on pretty much everything except some slippery surfaces like uh, wet grass. Yes, on wet grass, this is a little bit slippery. And of course, on the ice, they will be definitely, definitely slippery. Keep that in mind. On the ice, you really need that crazy aggression. And most of the times, 
anything you get from the shelf like this is not going to be ice appropriate unless it's specifically an ice boot with some metal spikes that just dig into it. Uh, so keep that in mind, just kind of throw it, out, throw it out there. But everything else, they perform very, very good. They perform very good on the sand because they're so flat. So again, they don't dig into the sand. Um, and everywhere else, even on shiny surfs like marble and tile, they are uh, not slippery. They, they, they hold pretty good, give you pretty good traction. So overall, excellent job, Columbia. Now let's move on to the criterion number five, temperature. I kind of mentioned that a little bit already briefly. Um, I tested them in North Carolina, I think it was about uh, 20, in 2025, so not too cold, definitely doing the job, 200 grams of insulation is not a lot, keep that in mind. If you want uh, to go a little bit more serious, you know, colder temperatures than your, you know, typical winter day, right, you want something that is, you know, probably 400 and above grams of insulation. And of course, you can play around with it if you are implementing some... Uh, Insulated socks, of course, some heated socks. Yeah, they have those if you, if you didn't know. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, so you can play around with it. You can always get a boot like this and, and kind of make it even warmer. Uh, but one thing that I wanted to mention, surprisingly in the hot climate, in the hot weather here in Florida, they actually do uh, pretty good. You know, they are not that hot in hot weather, you don't overheat whenever you're wearing them. It was about 85 degrees whenever I did my run and my walk and I was not overheating. So overall it is uh, fairly breathable in the hot weather. So good balance, I think. Really, really good balance whenever it comes to the temperature. Let's talk about the sizing now. Now, um, these are definitely true to the size, but one thing that I wanted to mention here, which I always do, is that make sure you get yourself at least half a size bigger than your normal shoe size, right? So if your dress shoes, your sneakers are nine and a half, for example, get yourself your boot size 10. And that goes for boots, that goes for hiking shoes, trail running shoes, because you want a little bit of the extra space here in the toe box that will prevent you from unnecessary fatigue of your toe just touching that all the time. Especially helps if you're going up and down the hill. Definitely, definitely great advice. I personally didn't know that. I got it from uh, one of my friends who does hiking for a living and it just changed, changed, changed the game for me. Yes, okay, keep that in mind. But let's move on to the criteria number seven now, the balance of application. So if uh, something bad happened and uh, I don't know, 2020 has been pretty crazy. So I'm sure you have some, I mean, 2020 is not over yet. So <laughs> you never know what might happen. <laughs> you probably have already some survival situa situation in mind, right? If you have never been a prepper after 2020, you maybe are already a prepper. So, so, uh, and these are the boots that you picked. Would, was that a good choice, right? Honestly, I think it's an excellent choice. I, I think these boots are great. They're comfortable, they're lightweight, excellent inner sole in combination with the additional jelly padding that they use there. Excellent feel from that insulation just for the comfort. I mean, just feels great on your feet. Um, they're not too heavy, so you can run fast, you can walk for however long and not feel fatigue from the weight. Um, they do not really offer any protection, so it's not really for people who want protection on the toe box, in the shaft, on the heels. They, they prefer protection. They will sacrifice the lightness, but they will pick the protection. Personally, I like lightness, so for me this is great because they are light. And they do have some good features like waterproofing and insulation, 200 grams. So I think I think that's a great option. Overall, I think it's a pretty cool option. And they look kind of cool too. Usually I don't talk about the looks, but this is really kind of a unique look. I think definitely Columbia did a great job there with the design. Uh, but let's move on to the very last criterion. Here is the price. And the price, like I said, is $130 on Amazon. Now, I think that they will drop in price uh, the more, you know, the more new models come up. Usually that's how it works. You know, the new model comes up and it's MSRP, right? And then it starts slowly going down. Uh, and of course, there is some uh, fairly serious competition in that price range, like Salomon, for example, or Loa. So there is very, very serious competition. So 
I think for Columbia Boot, without that much protection, without any serious proofing, right? No GTX waterproofing, um, only 200 grams of insulation. It's a little bit on the pricier side, but like I said, expect these boots to drop in price. So I, I'm not gonna be surprised if they will be running around $80 in the next year maybe six months, right? Uh, then that would be a steal, right? That would be a great deal. Uh, but right now, definitely on the pricier side, still worth it, don't get me wrong, but like I said, there is some serious competition out there, which I have reviewed on this channel, so check out other things. You never know, maybe you'll find something you like a little bit more. So, let me know in the comments below, guys, what you think about this review, what you think about this boot. Would you consider it as your uh, winter hiking boot? Would you consider it as your ultimate survival boot? Your opinion definitely matters. Thank you very much guys for watching. This was Firearms of America. I'll see you guys in the next video.